The next one on the list is a little bit more serious. Never get out of your car when you're stopped by the police. In many parts of the world, it is custom. Dude, I did not know this. Uh, if I'm... Yeah, you, you can actually walk... Oh my god, okay. Wait, is this true, my friend? <laughs> okay, I, how the hell I've been reacting? I have more... I have, what, 300 videos or something and no one ever explained me this. Today, I will be reacting to 10 things you should never do in the United States. Okay, this will be an interesting one. But before I go into that, uh, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like... Uh, Thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description and uh, let's play it. What is going on, YouTube? Greetings from my apartment here in Valencia, Spain. I've been traveling the world full time for almost 12 months now. And one of my really? favorite things to do before I get to a new country is to research the things to do but also research the things not to do. I think it's just as important to know what not to do as it is to know what to do in a country. Yeah. So in today's video, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and tell you what not to do in my country of the United States. Let me preface this by saying the United States is a huge country and culturally it can be very different depending on what part of the country you're in. Hawaii is way different than Texas. Texas Okay, I love Texas, by the way, but uh, and I also like uh, Hawaii. Let me say one thing. Uh, this point uh, right there makes a lot of sense to me because when I see these type of videos, the things you should never do in America uh, is a bit relative, right? Because uh, like he is explaining, so I'm actually repeating him, but uh, yeah, Texas is so different than California. California is so different than Florida. So you know what I mean? Um, but maybe there is some common ground. Texas is way different than California. California is way different than New York and so on and so on. Mm. But there are some things that apply basically throughout the country. So okay. those are the things that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, number one, never visit just New York or Disney World. Anytime someone tells me that... Okay, this is great advice because before starting this channel, I always wanted to visit America eventually. But of course, in my mind was, I go to New York, maybe to, to, to Disneyland, something like, basically the most popular places. Right now, I don't have this idea at all. I actually don't even want to visit the mainstream places anymore. I want to visit the South. I want to visit Texas. So this is something that ends up changing in me. One, never visit just New York or Disney World. Anytime someone tells me they've been in the United States, it's usually one of two places. They've either been to New York or they've been to Disney World or Disneyland. The United is States true. is so much more than that. It's so big and diverse. You have and beautiful. a zillion nope. lakes in a place like Minnesota. You have the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. You have a Patagonia type place in Montana. You have amazing tropical beaches in a place like wow. Hawaii. You have awesome Tex-Mex food down in Texas. And you have the most amazing forests and wildlife in a place like Washington State. I know you want to see New York and Disney World, and I definitely think you should, but if you're going to plan a trip... At Disney World, I might skip that, being honest with you. New York, I would love to visit, specific because the Statue of Liberty that you are seeing on the screen. Uh, for me, that's a, that statue almost gets me emotional, because it's the first thing I think about America, and uh, I don't know, I, I find it such, such a beautiful uh, statue that... I have to visit that one day, otherwise I would not feel complete uh, going to, to America. But uh, I, I would actually not spend a lot of time in New York, I feel like, uh, because I think America has so much more to, to offer, but I still like New York. Trip to the United States, at another location and go see something different and it'll show you how really diverse and beautiful this country is outside of those two popular destinations. For okay, sure. the next one on the list is a little bit more serious. Never get out of your car when you're stopped by the police. In many parts of the world, it is custom. Dude, I did not know this. Uh, if I'm... Yeah, you, you can actually walk... Oh my god, okay. Wait, is this true, my friend? <laughs> okay, I, how the hell I've been reacting? I have more... I have, what, 300 videos or something and no one ever explained me this. Because this can actually happen. Never get out of your car when you're stopped by the police. In many parts of the world, it is customary to get out of your car when the police stop you. That is not the case in the United States, and you definitely don't want to do this. 
Sometimes our police officers can be a little bit on edge and getting out of the car is the wrong thing to do. So make sure you don't do that in okay. the United States. Just stay in your car and okay. wait for the police officer to approach your window. The third thing on the list is never forget to tip. This is something that comes up a lot in my other never do this videos. And it's usually the other side of it because in a lot of countries, it's not customary to tip. Servers in other countries don't rely on tips for their income. They're paid a higher wage, so it's not a big deal. But in the United States, servers rely on their tips to pay the bills. Nor this one, my friends, I think I'm well prepared. I know I have to give 20% all the time, right? You guys tell me, Andre, 20% to 30%. I'm poor. I'm going with the 20%, by the way. But uh, yeah, this one, I'm good. Normally, you should tip somewhere between 15 and 25%. When you go to a restaurant, when you take a cab, when you go get your nails done, things like that. Next thing on the list is never get too close. In the US, okay. we really like our personal space. When I was in the military, I actually lived in Italy for two years. I moved there in 1998 and I had never lived outside of the United States before. I had a little bit of culture shock. In Italy, Italians don't really have a sense of personal space. When you meet an Italian and greet them, even if you just met them, usually you kiss each other on the cheek. That's something in the US that we just don't do. Also in most other countries. Yeah, we do this here all the time, the kiss on the cheek. Uh, okay. It's perfectly acceptable to get right up on somebody in a line or push or try to go around them. In the US, we have like a very orderly system and we don't like people too close to us and we don't get too close to somebody else. So yeah, Sorry. just make sure you respect people's space unless they invite you in their space. No, I, I will. Okay, the next one is a little bit political, but never say you like or you dislike Trump. We are just so, so <laughs> politically divided right now in the United States. What it's the hell? Why Trump? I feel like this applies to, um, what's the name? Joe Biden. Joe Biden, the Democratic guy. The, the president of America, not the Democrat, all I'm saying. Um, but maybe Trump is a more... Um, I've, I'm not sure if this is true, but maybe Trump splits people more. Could be that, and maybe people like Joe Biden. Uh, even people that do dislike Joe Biden does not dislike him as much as the people that dislike Trump. Is that correct? I I don't know. To, to be honest, um, Trump is crazy famous here. I mean, it's just best to steer clear of that discussion. So when you're talking about just visiting a place, you don't really have to get involved in the political rhetoric that goes on. Okay, the next one. Okay, I have to say one thing about Trump because I, I, I like to be honest. <laughs> I guess I'm not even following his, his advice. Uh, but when I was a bit younger, there was a show um, with him and his kids that uh, the, the, I forget, I believe it was The Apprentice, right? Uh, then uh, he goes, you are fired. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that show a lot. As a president, as a politician, my friends, I, I frankly don't don't know. But the show I thought was actually quite, uh, quite, um, quite fun, and and I can see why people may like his personality because Trump seems a person made um, for TV. Am I saying something wrong? If you disagree, tell me, please. One is a real sticking point with me, and one of the things that I really don't like about the United States: never think you can rely on public transportation. Other than a few cities like New York and DC, the public transportation systems in the United States are not very good. If you're in smaller towns or rural areas, it's basically non-existent. We are very much a car culture in the United States and that's kind of how we get around. We don't really have a good nationwide train system and the ones we have, they're not very fast. So you can't transit from city to city by train and expect to get there in a reasonable time. You're going to have to either okay. drive or hop on a plane. That's just how it is in the United States. I know it sucks. So just be prepared. Yeah, I said this a couple of times already. For me, this is irrelevant. I also don't like public transportation that much. I like to drive. To not use public transportation. But I can see for some people this can be problematic. Transportation. Okay, the next one. Never call soccer football. Football is a completely different thing in the United States than it is. Okay, soccer. It is in the rest of the world. It does not matter that your football is the most popular sport in the world. In the United States, 
American football is the most popular sport and we just call it football. You can try, but you're never gonna convince an American that soccer is better than American football. Someone like Ronaldo. Better, I mean, better is always relative, but uh, I would say one thing, my friend, American football, specific even more the college uh, environment, uh, seems a lot of fun. I, I feel like I if I go to America, uh, and I go watch a couple of games, I may become a huge fan of this. Um, but, uh, you know, for sure, and I believe for sure there is people watching, wa watching me right now that they watch <coughs> soccer and football. And, you know, you can... It's the same thing. There is a couple of you guys that probably like baseball and uh, football, you know, so you can watch multiple sports. Ronaldo could walk around the United States and most people would not recognize him. Next. Okay. Is that true, my friends, that Cristiano Ronaldo can go into the United States and people do not know him? Because I feel like Cristiano Ronaldo is at least top three, the most, uh, in maybe top five, okay, most famous people in the world. Am I crazy? Maybe in America he's not. I, I know Messi is in America right now, but I think Cristiano Ronaldo is a bit more famous than Messi. Um, but I guess it's debatable, I'm not sure. Someone like Ronaldo could walk around the United States and most people would not recognize him. Next, never expect Americans to be able to speak any other language than English. Unfortunately... Wait. This is crazy. I reacted to a different video that said that this is... Um, what's the word? I'm sorry. Uh, this is a stereotype that uh, people think Americans just know English that a lot of Americans know a second language could be a Portuguese, no, no, Portuguese, could be, I mean, maybe, but could be Spanish or French most of the time, maybe even German. Um, now, this guy is, I mean, I'm enjoying his video a lot, by the way, but uh, this one I, wa I was not expecting. What do you guys think about this? Expect Americans to be able to speak any other language than English. Unfortunately, it's just not something we prioritize. I'm also definitely guilty of this. Because of the influence of US pop culture and tourism, almost everywhere I've been, I've been able to get by with mm. English. For better or worse, we don't really need to speak another language. This makes a lot of sense, actually, because you guys are the number one. So you watch the best movies are in English. You know, for us to watch the best movies, they are in English. It's a big difference if you really think about it. And uh, yeah, English is basically the most important language in the world language so we haven't made it a priority in the united states i know this is Great a little point. bit of a generalization and i have some friends that are bilingual but for the most part americans tend to speak only english number nine never expect our pharmacies to just sell pharmaceutical stuff in most <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> this one is crazy my friends <laughs> you can buy bananas in in the pharmacy no that's insane no chance <laughs> Oh man, uh, to be honest, it's kind of practical, you know, uh, you know, give me, uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, some medicament, uh, never mind. Most other countries, pharmacies only have pharmaceutical stuff. In the United mm. States, pharmacies are more like general stores. They have a little bit of everything. In most CVSs, Walgreens, Rite Aids, you can buy your pharmaceutical stuff. You can also buy food. You can buy... Wait, if I go to Walmart, I can buy my pharmace pharmaceutical stuff also? Because it makes sense. I mean, if, if there is no difference between a pharmacy and a Walmart, why not? Am I crazy? Toys. You can even buy beach equipment. Our pharmacies <laughs> aren't just pharmacies. Another little side note. It's really hard to get a drug to market in the United States. So things that are commonly available at pharmacies throughout the world might not be available in U.S. pharmacies. So just be aware of that when you travel to the United States. Rule number 10, never drink if you are under 21 years of age. Okay. Most of the rest of the world has a much lower drinking age than the United States. In Vietnam, you can drink at any age. In the U.S., Drinking laws are very, very strict. So make sure if you're under 21 that you're not trying to buy or drinking alcohol. Another side note is never drink in public. Most cities and states have strict open container laws, which means if you're walking around with alcohol and it's open, you can be ticketed or fined. Wait, 
But if you go to to okay, that one lost me a bit. If you go to a college football game and people is drinking, having having a nice time, you cannot drink there or around the stadium. You you have to go inside of the stadium. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Okay, so those are my things to never do in the <laughs> United States. Do you have anything to add? If you do, make sure you put it down in the comments. If you disagree with some of the things I said, make sure you also comment. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos okay. like this. And okay, great video. Check check his channel. Let's recap this because this was really interesting. And see you. And um, okay, so the first one. You guys can skip this part if you guys don't want, but. The first one was uh, never just okay. This makes sense. Uh, okay, no, not get close about tipping. Okay, the police one was kind of wild. The thing about Trump, I think the way he said was a bit one-sided. Am I off? Because I think this is more about politics, not just about Trump. But I wonder. I mean. Never mind. This was a great video, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Really means a lot that you guys end up spending this time with me. If you can leave a like, that would be fantastic. If not, also good. See you guys next time.